Sir Harold Evans, who has died aged 92, was a legend among journalists. His campaigns against injustice and for the highest journalistic standards forged his reputation. During his tenure as editor of the Sunday Times, he turned the paper into a beacon for crusading journalism. His finest moment was probably his campaign for the families of children who suffered birth defects as a result of the drug thalidomide. Harold Evans was born on 28 June 1928 in Eccles, Lancashire, now in Greater Manchester, the son of Welsh parents. His father was an engine driver while his mother ran a small grocery shop from the family home. Evans later described them as the self-consciously respectable working class. He would later recall the mythic north of my childhood, where there was comfort in being rooted in a community and recognized within it as a good neighbor. He left school at 16 and wrote applications to every newspaper in the Manchester area, finally securing a job at the Ashton Underline Reporter. It was, he recalled, a paper that bothered with the little things in people's lives, the whist drives and flower shows. After national service he adopted the same tenacious approach and wrote to every university in the UK, there were just 14 in those days, finally landing a place at Durham. There he read politics and economics and edited the university magazine, The Palatinate. He forged his reputation as assistant editor of the Manchester Evening News, which he joined in 1952, in a city, he said, that simply throbbed with news day and night. It was in the United States, where he traveled for two years on a Harkness Fellowship, that he got the taste for investigative journalism. America did not have the same dominant national newspapers that flourished in Britain, neither did US journalists share the awe of the establishment that still pervaded the press in the UK. The crusading ambitions of local US papers were also in sharp contrast to the rather mundane local press Evans knew at home. On his return he had the opportunity to put what he had learned into practice when he was appointed editor of the Northern Echo, based in Darlington. Evans was determined to put Darlington and the Echo on the national stage. He persuaded the BBC in Newcastle to make a documentary showing him at work and reorganized the paper's bureaucratic hierarchy. One of his first campaigns was against the chemical giant ICI, whose plant at Billingham was polluting the area with a noxious smell. Criticized by local dignitaries for attacking one of the area's biggest employers, Evans persevered and finally got an admission from the company that it had problems with leaks at the plant. Other investigations resulted in a national screening program for cervical cancer, and he was part of the campaign to secure a posthumous pardon for Timothy Evans, wrongly hanged for murder in 1950. His own profile was raised by appearances on the TV program What the Papers Say. In 1964 he was offered the job of managing editor at the Sunday Times. When the editor left shortly afterwards, Evans got the job. He also inherited the newly created Insight team of investigative journalists. It was manna from heaven for his own crusading instincts. During his 13 years at the helm, the paper's most notable campaign was fighting for greater compensation for the victims of thalidomide. The drug, which first appeared in the UK in 1958, was prescribed to expectant mothers to control the symptoms of morning sickness. Don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me why. I know, no, no, you won't save my life. Save my life.